Bro, come on! Uh, uh, just start the podcast already. Jeez! It's all... Uh, I know you do this every time, but like... I gotta wait for that whole loading bar? Ugh. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Turn... Oh, right, let's see what the old Italian lady has to say. This section of the stream is now my property. Okay. Okay, thank you, Extra Most, for the two months. Uh, Will, what are you doing? You're looking down. What's what's up? So, I've been told that this can win me $1,000. So, I've been looking for the Mew in here. I don't think there is. And I'm really upset because you know how long it took me to explain to my father-in-law <laughs> why he couldn't eat certain Oreos? <laughs> <laughs> so, let, let me be clear. Will now has the Pokemon Oreos in his hand. And the Mew is supposedly rare. And some were on eBay asking for up to $1,000. Yeah. Now, um... Got Grookey. That's a Grookey right there. How how does he taste? It's like an Oreo. So... I don't think they're act I don't think the Mews are actually worth that much and I think that they became less rare. Like the first day that they were out, they were rare, but yeah. after that I'm pretty sure nobody cared anymore. Um Probably. And, I mean I've still see it here and there for like a stupid amount of money. And Oreos are frequently broken in the box. So, yeah. <laughs> uh I I don't think the chances of getting like a good one are very high. Also, if you happen to find a good Mew, mm -hmm. please let me eat it. Well, see, my plan was to hopefully find it on camera during the stream so that I could eat it. Ah, okay, okay. I'll allow it. But I don't think there are legitimately any in this pack. Well, you're going to have to buy another five packs then. I guess. I mean, you can't just <laughs> oh, live no, a normal life. Oh, no, I have life. to buy more Oreos. <laughs> The problem is, I ate one already, and you can't eat just one Oreo. You no, you have to eat, eat four. More. You have to eat at least one sleeve. Grookey. Yeah. Grookey. Grookey's worth nothing. We don't want Grookey's no. here. Who cares about Grookey? Oh, God. Thank you, Dark Type, for the 100 bits. Ah, Sora. Yeah, we'll get to that. Jeffrey Sorensen with nine months. Happy Tuesday. I just used my free Prime sub for you guys, which everybody should. I mean, it's oh. free. If you got Amazon Prime, you get to gift the oh, sub. I have to do that right now, actually. You because it is, it is a new month. Uh, did you hear that there is an old lady switch? No, I have no idea. I didn't, I didn't have any idea. So here's my here's my little I, I've talked about this before on the stream, but this is for the podcast. I've been running this this one shot of Link in this one shrine in Breath of the Wild to try to burn in the screen. It's been running for a few days now. Really? Yeah. Uh, I plan on leaving it for like a few weeks. So I'm gonna get my white OLED switch this Friday. Uh, and I'll have a video on it, hopefully that same day. Um, and hopefully this will stay on for the next few weeks. So, so you can't leave a switch on. It'll dim, and there's no way to, to stop the screen from dimming. It'll, it just happens every, like, five minutes the screen will dim. So what I have here is the Hori split pad. I think it was Edible Jim Sock who suggested this. I was going to use a different controller, but he suggested this. So it's a Hori split pad. It has a turbo function where it will just mash the A button on its own forever. So it's been mashing the A button, which does nothing. It's been mashing right. the A button for a few days now. And it's been working just fine. There was a little hiccup the first night where uh, it signed me out. Because I, I guess I wasn't online and I need to be... Because this is my secondary switch. So uh, it signed me out real quick. And then it was just mashing like the, the, the cancel button over and over and over again. Uh, so if I ever want to use my switch, my other switch, I have to, uh, I have to 
back out of the game, go to the photo album where I took a screenshot of this, and then mash the R button, because the R button does nothing. And then I'll right. go back and, and into this. So this will be on on here for a few weeks until I experience some burn-in. Because we're not sure how much of a problem OLED burn-in is going to be. Uh, but I'm fairly certain it will be... It's it, It's not a question of will it burn in it's when will it burn in and and it might take a really long time but we want to just see right. i, I want to just see how how long it takes and also since i got it like a week early uh i i want to be the first to run it into the ground and put it through its paces and then i'll send it back to nintendo hopefully they'll they'll refurbish it or something then i'll give it to some like one of you people uh anyway that's my little diatribe about the OLED switch. So basically, I've had the OLED switch for a few days now, and I haven't touched it. I've just been leaving it on this, this one shot of Breath of the Wild. Anyway, uh, Rope Dog, thank you for the two months. Bob, do you have a go-to cold brew method? Toddy, RJ3, I don't know what any of those are. Uh, I, I I use a cheesecloth, and uh, and then I f- double filter it again through, uh, through a V60 paper, and that's it. I, I, it's a very gorilla method. Uh, today I totally messed up and, yeah, what uh, what the hell was that? Okay. So I'll, I'll pull that up. Well, I promise today, listen, we're getting off topic. I promise we we're are. talking about how the, the new dock and cable for the OLED switch is going to be 4k ready or it is 4k ready. Supposedly. Um, we're also going to talk about Sora and smash and, and what that means and, and kingdom hearts coming to switch or whatnot. Uh, we also have to talk about the new games coming to PlayStation Plus and Xbox Games with Gold. Yes. But before we do that, we have to go on these long diatribes. If you're listening yes. to this on YouTube later, there'll be uh, links in the bottom where you can sc- scroll ahead. But most of you are here because you like our long diatribes. So this is my uh, mess that I made today. Uh, I, want, I, I'm, I have too much coffee. Trade sent me way too much coffee, which is great. You love co- I love I love too much coffee. It's a good problem to have. So it's getting old, so I need to do something with it. So I made, I took a whole bag and I made as much co- uh, cold brew as I could get out of it. And uh, I ground it too fine because I didn't want to change the settings on my grinder. Which would be fine if you grind it fine. You just have to uh, brew it for less time. But I woke up late. So I overslept and I missed when I had to take it, when I had to filter it out. So... Uh, it overbrewed. It was way too strong. It was like really gritty and gross tasting. So basically, I just made a concentrate. So then I just watered it down and it tasted fine. And then I just diluted it with some pumpkin spice and some and some uh, oat milk and it tastes it. And here it is. And it tastes great. So there you go. I fixed it. Lesson learned, though. Next time I make cold brew, I will uh, grind it coarse. And uh, I won't oversleep it. See, a life hack is if you buy the coffee grounds pre-ground, you don't Ew. run into this problem. Ew. How dare you? You just buy the uh, the Target brand coffee. Ew. And you just throw it in your cold brew your cold brew device, and it, it tastes, tastes fine. I'm going to kick you off this. Fine. I'm going to kick you off this damn podcast. Yeah, you got to grind it like fresh. The, I like the dynamic between maximalist coffee expert Bob Wolf and basic bitch <laughs> just use whatever you got will wolf so the irony here is that you actually have a cold brew maker and i don't it's yeah it's it's a cold brew maker but it's like i actually was looking it up while you were talking it's the oxo uh cold brew maker mm. and literally it's just a pitcher with a filter on the bottom that pours it into another pitcher that you actually yeah. store the coffee in so, I mean, I'm just using a cheesecloth. That's it. It's the same it thing. It helps because there's measurements in it and like it, ha- it has the filter built in and whatnot. So I didn't have to like do anything extra. Y- Yushi but. in the chat says, unpopular, pimp- unpopular opinion, pumpkin spice kind of nasty dough. So I made my own pumpkin spice because I didn't like how sweet pumpkin spice syrup normally is. So it's like not, mm-hmm. it's just a little pumpkin, you know, it's a little dash of pumpkin. Anyway, uh, what was I said? Somebody else said something. Oh, yeah. I So uh, I ground it. I ground the coffee as if it were espresso, which is usually a no-no. But if you if you take it, if you if you 
only brew it for 14 hours, it's fine. I brewed it for like 16 and a half, 17 hours. So so it, I totally, I totally messed it up. Uh, anyway. Oh, let me see here. There's, here's, uh, here's, uh, I've redeemed myself here. There's a beautiful, 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 beautiful pumpkin spice. Anyway. Yay. Uh, right. more notifications, though. We got, uh, where am I? Oh, my God, there's still so many of you. <laughs> I appreciate all of the support. Uncle Geeb, thank you for the raid. Xanotos, thank you for the subscription. Dark type, thanks for 100 bits. I'll mail you my five Mew Oreos I've saved. The only compensation I ask is that you follow me on Twitter. Oh, gee, that's a tall order. I don't know about that, buddy. As, yeah. Uh, Trep with 12 months. One year, baby. Hell yeah, dude. Sp yeah. Sp Sporzek, thank you for the 11 months. Saw a car in Astoria with Bob a babe vanity plates on Friday. You weren't driving though. Bob a babe, is that the vanity plate? That is my yeah, vanity, vanity plate. That was me. You saw me. Migs Luna, thank you for the 15 months. Paul Line, thank you for the 33 months. These Charlie Luigi Pepe videos are killing me. Yeah, that's like what's preventing me from believing Charlie Day is Luigi. I keep watching those. Uh, dark type with a hundred bits. Honest thoughts: Are you more hyped about a new Smash like game, Nick? Nick, Nick All Stars, or the fact that Sora is finally in Smash? I'm seeing videos of. I was excited for All Star Battle, whatever the hell it's called. Nickelodeon Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah, I've been excited for that, and I'm I'm seeing videos of it, and it looks bad. Oh, no. I, I own That's it. Disappointing. I, I haven't got a chance to play it yet, but I I uh, yeah. I do intend to 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 play it. Uh, last thing I'm going to read. Trevel says, "Where's this info coming from? I only brew my cold brew at 12 hours on a course grind. What's this 14 hour stuff? I've only heard 14 to 18 hours is what I've heard. 12. I'm I've sure heard, I'm sure you're fine with 12. I've heard 8 to 12, and I try to go for 12 when I do mine. Maybe I've just been doing a concentrate this whole time. Maybe. Um, I, I always put oat milk in it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, also, you can make cold brew in an arrow press. And I want to put cold brew in quotes because they say it takes 10 minutes. <laughs> and it's like, that doesn't sound like cold brew. That just sounds like, just sounds like a friggin' yeah. like an instant coffee. Yeah. Anyway, I know we've been we've been burying the lead a little bit, but at the beginning of every month, we like to do a little PSA, and we like yes. to talk about the free games, or not free, but the games you can get included with your various uh, uh, online services for your consoles. Yes. If you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, uh, these are the free games you will be able to get with your subscription, starting with PlayStation, available today. Meaning right this second, when you're done watching this live on twitch.tv slash wolf, then go over to the PlayStation Store and get them. Uh, you can get Hell Let Loose on the PS5, PGA Tour 20, uh, 2K21 on the PS4, and Mortal Kombat X on the PS4. Oh, oh, X. Okay, that was the last one. Yeah. Not, not Well, not the current one, but the one before Not that. the current one, the one before that, yeah. Right, 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 yeah. right. What the hell's so, hell uh, let loose? Uh, and, and looks like some PS5 World War II game. Cool, dude. What a great time to release a World War II game. <laughs> a World War II inspired multiplayer title splices epic 100 player battles with oh. a unique resource based RTS inspired meta game oh. where commanders direct the flow of battles and coordinate powerful in game abilities that influence the team's march to victory. Team up and tackle enemy combatants online in 50 versus 50 skirmishes across a dynamically shifting front line. Uh, choose one of 14 playable roles within within infantry, recon, and armor unit types, each equipped with unique weapons, vehicles, and equipment. That was so the worst trailer like... I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it showed oh, team nothing. 17. Team 17, the creators of Worms. Really? <laughs> That's all I know them for, yeah. I'm going to be honest, it sounds like a cool concept. I don't like RTSs, but if you throw that in with a 100-team battle, that kind of might be yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So, I'm watching I mean, I'm watching a different like, trailer right now. 
Yeah, I mean, it looks like, you know, for the most part, it's a first-person shooter, but there are some, there's like a few people get to play an RTS while you do the shooting because they're telling you what to do. What? You get that told it... what to do? I don't like being told what to do. Commanders direct the flow of battle and coordinate powerful in-game abilities that influence the team's march to victory. That says to me that for the most part, it's a first-person shooter, but for some players, there will be real-time strategy elements that you know basically put them in the role of the commander. Well, it, it looked like there was like uh, mortars and stuff. So like maybe there's yeah. like there's like mortars and like gunships you can command and stuff that aren't like uh, that are CPU based and not human. Uh, Metascension says the key feature of Hell at Loose is that squads have limited communication with human commanders and orders need to be relayed by squad commanders and stuff. Interesting. Oh, so squad commanders talk to that's actually that's pretty cool. I mean, it yeah. sucks if you aren't the squad commander uh, and you want to be, but uh, yeah. that's kind of that's an interesting little dynamic. An another problem yes. with these freaking games. I don't want to talk to anybody like I like know. I want so badly to be able to play like like an Overwatch or, or a Valorant style game. But then I remember I don't want to freaking talk to random people. And like sometimes I'll be like thrown into. Oh, you know what it was? Halo. I was playing Halo over oh, the weekend. Yeah. Halo. Incredible. I had a blast playing Halo and I didn't think I was going to like it because I, I thought it was, I was like, oh, team based games. We don't need that anymore. We got battle royales. But no, it's freaking fun. If you have yeah. a big squad. Um but I left voice chat on for a minute, and I remembered why I hate team-based games, because I don't want to listen or talk to anybody. Oh, I mean, um, a, a team-based game like Halo, you don't really need to talk to anybody, because most of that is just, you know, team deathmatch. As well, long as you kill the, the other color, everything's well, fine. Well, well, we were playing, like, Domination and stuff, or, like, you know, uh, where you, like, capture the objective or capture the flag. And uh, those are fun if you have a big squad, because it's like, oh, they're, they're taking C, they're taking C, and then you all run to C. You know, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, but it was fun. Uh, I I uh, I uh, I'm horrible at the game unless yeah. unless I find the sniper. But the sniper is like completely overpowered. Um. Anyway. Uh, what, what else? was that? All the game? Did we talk about all the games? Yeah, PGA uh 2K21. It was last year's golf game. I'm sure it's fine. Uh, and then Mortal Kombat X, uh, which is a very good Mortal Kombat game. I like that one a lot. I had a very bad first impression of it because it took me forever to actually play the fucking thing. But after I get past that, it was very good. I'm being told to raise you a little bit. I think I am a little higher than you. There, you are now at 100% audio. All right. Okay, there we go. I am in the same league. Uh. Anyway, Edible Jim Sock, you're the one who told me about the freaking uh, Hori split pad doing the... Doing the Mashing the A button, right? I don't want to get that wrong. Anyway, all right. Do we have games with gold? Yes, we do. Let's talk about those free games we got, or okay. games included with your Xbox Live subscription, which you don't need what to play Halo, by the way. You don't need that to play Halo. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because Halo multiplayer is going to be free to play. And yeah. And they're going to treat it as separate from the full yeah. game, which is not a bad idea. Okay. So, on the Xbox One, uh, for the entire month of October, you get arrow and from the 16th to november 15th you get hover they really don't care uh, about xbox, xbox live anymore <laughs> <laughs> on the xbox 360 which you can play on modern systems through backwards compatibility from now until november 15th you get castlevania harmony of despair and from october 16th to the 31st just in time for halloween it's resident evil code veronica x Yo, these two games look kind of good, though. Right? They're like... Arrow and Hover look kind of good. Is Ho Hover's yeah, the Jet they... Grind Radio, uh, uh, like, uh... I think it is. It's the one that's not the one. <laughs> yeah. It's the one before the one that's, like, kind of it, but not really. It, yeah, it's, it's not Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. It's yes. Other one, yeah. But it looks... They both look good. I might... Yeah. I might try one. Yeah. And then I was disappointed because apparently Castlevania Harmony of Despair is a multiplayer game. What? <laughs> yeah. I've it's never a six-player co-op game. Yeah. And it looks like it's a classic Castlevania game, so that's very disappointing. 
Uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica X is one of the early uh, Resident Evil games that I did not play. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was a it lot on... of people's favorites. For a long time, yeah. It was uh, originally a Dreamcast game. Uh, and then it got ported to the PS2 as Code Veronica X. And that's this version. That explains why that's the version... we, we didn't ever play it. Well, we have it. Right. And I've played it for a little bit. But my problem is I played it after I played Resident Evil 4. Exactly. And there was no going back to that camera system as after Resident Evil 4. Right. Also, Code Veronica, like, the story, like, I, I've looked up the story to it, and it's one of those stories that's too into the Resident Evil lore. Like, it just keeps adding more bullshit. Well, that, that's why people but, liked it a lot, because it was, it was like, part one of the defining... Uh, it defined a lot of what the story was like that. Like that's where right. Wesker was like a superhuman, right? But I feel like nowadays when people think of like the best Resident Evil games, they're always the games with a lot less Resident Evil bullshit in it, like mm. one, two, four, and seven. Like those don't really, you know, build up and hammer in like the the overarching umbrella conspiracy. Wesker is isn't really a factor if he's in it at all. <laughs> Um, and a lot of stuff like that. So, right. I don't know if people look as fondly on Code Veronica now as they did back when it came out. Right, right. Uh, why you both are wearing red? I'm wearing salmon. Uh, Because we called each other and we coordinated. That's definitely exactly what happened. Didn't you get the memo? Uh, on so, Wednesdays, we wear red. Overall... I'm going to say, uh, I mean, these are both pretty bad. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of interested in Hell Let Loose. Um, I'm also interested, you know what? I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to shit too much on uh, games with gold. Arrow and Hover kind of look kind of look pretty interesting. Yeah. No, no, nothing too groundbreaking going on on either of them, though. I feel like at this point now, they're, they're doing two different things. Like, PS Plus is continuing the, you know... Every once in a while, you'll get a big blockbuster game in there. Um, and then Xbox Games with Gold, it's more like, here are some indie lesser-known titles that you might have missed. And something cool from the 360, maybe. We're running out of 360 games. Give us a break. I have to add, there are new games for uh, Game Pass, if you have a Game Pass subscription. Uh, mm. Totally Accurate Battle Simulator which I do want to try. That's a battle royale that's like really like weird and silly and the physics are crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. Um, what else? What else? Back for Blood. Oh, Back for Blood. That's a new game and that's coming to Game Pass. Destiny 2 is already on Game Pass. Oh, this is Beyond Light. That's a different expansion, I yeah. think. But this is for Windows. So oh. for Windows Game Pass, that's pretty cool. Uh, the Rift Breaker. I don't know what that is. Uh, and then October 15th, we have Katana Zero. Nice. If you ever want a reason to pick that up, here you go. Wait till October no, no, 15th. No, no. It, will, it, will, it will leave Xbox Game Pass on October 15th. Ah, fuck. So play it now. So play it now. It says cloud. Oh, yeah. Cloud console PC. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I would also like to add, uh, to combat, combat all this, uh, Sony announced that in October, The Last of Us Part Two is joining PlayStation Now. Yeah, but we don't like PlayStation Now. <laughs> can you download the games True. yet? Did we figure that out? I think you can, but not PS3 games. Okay, what about PS4 games? Those you can download. Okay, well then, then maybe we'll like it again. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's move on to finally what everybody's here for. Yes. Uh, let's talk about this. We have a teardown that suggests that the Switch OLED dock is 4K 60 frames per second ready and quote future proof. Uh, this article basically just details a video by our buddy Nintendo Prime over here. I'm going to link it in the chat. Uh, you can like save it to, the, to your watch later or something. Uh. But essentially, he tears down the dock, uh, and there's two things he finds here. I'll just read the article. By way of comparison, the HDMI controller inside the original dock adheres to the older HDMI 1.4 standard, as is the cable it ships with, and is not compatible with 4K 60 frames per second. So the original Nintendo Switch dock 
is old ass HDMI isn't capable of doing 4K 60. What is HDMI 1.4 capable of? I think it's capable of 4K 30. Yes, but I think I want to say only video, but I know that's not entirely right. Uh, because 4K because 4K Blu-ray players require HDMI 2.0 cables. You guys like how I spelled compatibility? Com compatibility. I I look at this chart frequently. Here we go. Uh, okay, dude. Give me the chart, dude. Come on, dude. Where's the chart, dude? Come on, dude. Give me the chart, dude. Come on, dude. Oh my god, I've been to this website before because it was zoomed in 150%. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, HDMI 1.4 is capable of 1440p at 60 frames per second and 4K at 30 okay. max. And that might only be 1.4b, which is like a firmware update. Yeah. Um. So in order to do 4K 60, it has to be HDMI 2.1. So it's a completely different port and cable in order to allow for more bandwidth. It also yeah. means that if you do 4K 30, you're capped at uh, HDR. If you put HDR on there, it fucks up everything. That's another thing, yeah. Because HDR was, is even more information going being fed through the cable. Yeah, and like the PlayStation 4 Pro and stuff, uh, a lot of games would interlace the HDR if you tried to play a game in 4k it would do some yeah. weird thing to to interlace the hdr it was it was uh, very weird so uh in order to even be capable of 4k 60 it needs to be hdmi 2.0 or higher the playstation 5 and xbox series x and at and s are hdmi 2.1 but the series s can't do over four can't do over 1440p 60 right actually i think it could do 120 i'm not sure i'm pretty sure it's uh, the cable is at least hdmi 2.1 right the xbox series x and the playstation 5 are hdmi 2.1 <sighs> and they could do a lot they could do 4k 120 and it's fucking beautiful but yeah. i don't have that monitor here so i can't test the i can't test the switch stuff but what i do have is the cable do do i can i can i do this Oh, I don't have this. This is the camera. cable that came with your Switch OLED. Yes. So that's another thing. I'm getting ahead of myself here, but Nintendo Prime also details. Uh, let me read the article before I do anything. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting way too excited about this, Will. Uh, Nintendo Prime also points out that while there's an ARM based chip on the dock's motherboard, it does not have the power required to upscale a 1080p image to 4K. So any upscaling would need to be handled by a more powerful Switch console. So he's saying there's no dedicated chip for something like DLSS. Um, the mm -hmm. Switch itself could like maybe do it, but it doesn't have enough power to like uh, do it for real, if you know what I mean. Like it could probably right. do like freaking Netflix or something in 4K, but like it's yeah, not yeah. going to, it's not going to, it doesn't have it's the not horsepower. Make the games run, yeah. Yeah. Um, blah blah blah. Uh, oh, I skipped over this part. Uh, when comparing a revised dock with the original one, it was found that not only does the dock itself have the HDMI 2.0 controller required for 4K output, but the cable it ships with is also 4K ready. So the the little controller, the HDMI controller, the I think they they match the part number of it with other HDMI 2.0 uh, port parts, right? And it's it's one of those so it's at least hdmi 2.0 and the cable is different uh i'm not, i think he just plugged the cable in and ran a test and i know that the old cable is definitely 1.4 because i've tried yeah. to use it for things and it doesn't really work this cable is black aren't they all black uh no they're gray it's the, it's the, the cable that comes with the original switch is the same cable that comes with the wii u uh and i, I gotta check here. mine Maybe I'm lying. This one's gray. Old. This one's kind of black. I mean, my my switch HDMI cable's downstairs, so I have to run down and get it. I got I got mine right here. Okay. No, I'm lying. It's the same color. Uh, it's rounded though. It's rounded around the sides, okay. whereas the old one has like this little, this little like notch. Yeah, I can bring it closer to the camera. 
So this is the old one. Well, it's not even old. I think this is the one that came with my uh, my uh, Mario uh, Switch, which would be interesting. Okay. Maybe I should test test that out and see if it's capable of a uh, 4K. Uh, it just says made in China. And that's it. It's got the big old Nintendo logo. It doesn't say anything, really. Uh, but I haven't even used this cable at all. I, uh, all I, I, I didn't even, I haven't even docked my OLED switch. It's just been freaking, it's just been sitting right there. Right. I played it for a little bit. I was like, this is gorgeous. And then I, I decided I wanted to spend my time with it, running it into the ground. Um, but anyway, uh, maybe we should take some time right now, Will, to, uh, plug in my Xbox and see if this, see, cause the Xbox series X, you reminded me has a, uh, has a little test. Yeah, it has um, basically a display compatibility test where it will tell, it'll actually break down and tell you what your display and your HDMI cable is capable of in terms of resolution, HDR, Dolby Vision, uh, surround sound, 10 bits, 8 bit, all that. All this crap you don't think you need to know, but is actually comes in handy. And right. it'll specify video game play or uh, movie streaming and it, it it does everything that's in your setup so it it yeah it it checks it against your monitor and stuff unfortunately i don't have my 120 hertz monitor with me yeah i just have this uh i just have this benq which is a uh, 4k 60 frames per second so right. we'll be able to also confirm what nintendo prime said and see if it's uh hdmi 2.0 at least when I get to the studio, maybe tomorrow, I could maybe test to see if it's uh, 2.1, but I doubt it's 2.1. One thing that uh, uh, Nintendo Life points out is maybe it's just easier to get 2.0 cables now. Maybe that's maybe, maybe. that's the only maybe I mean, that's the only difference. They've probably gone down in price enough that you they can sell them, they can bundle it with the Switch. Right. So uh, now Lapras, everybody, this one's a Lapras. <laughs> So unfortunately, I can't. Uh, I can't do a screen capture. I, I can't run this through my capture card um, because uh, my capture card is limited to uh, the way it's set up is really bizarre, and it's only I can do 4K 60, but it's like it's really shitty. It doesn't work really well with the uh, with the Xbox. So I'm just running it straight to my monitor, uh, and then we could do 4K D. Oh, it's running 4K right now. That's good to know. There you go. I could try to just point the camera at it. Maybe that'll work. Like this. Boop. <laughs> That's good. Looks terrible. <laughs> uh, but you have 4K video details. Uh... Your TV supports 4K UHD at 60 hertz. So there you go. That's all you need to know. Your TV doesn't yeah. support 4K 120. Uh... HDR10 for games and apps is turned off to turn it on, back up, and select video modes. Okay, let's try that. I mean, why not? Yeah. Because the thing is, yes, it might be able to do H, um, 4K at 60, but we'll also be able to do HDR at the same time. That's what at least um, HDMI 2.0 cables can do. Your TV supports 4K 10-bit 60 hertz. I think that confirms HDMI 2.1 for sure. Yes. Uh, your TV supports capturing 4K game clips and screenshots. Okay, well, yeah, of course. Your TV supports capturing HDR gameplay clips and sc screenshots. So, uh, there you go. We we confirmed right. what Nintendo Prime said. This cable is... Should I should I, bought, should I plug the other one in just to, just to verify? Yeah, why not? Okay, Do Will. Real quick verification. Okay, Will. Because we are nothing up. if not thorough... Always. And you like to waste time. Yes. Uh, let's see here. I got the old cable, but that's another thing. This is this might be my Mario edition cable, but I mean, who cares? We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, now I'm just I'm just bastardizing my setup. I had to move my water to make sure I don't. Freaking knock that over. That would be terrible. 
Maybe a patch will come? Okay, so that's possible. There could be a patch that allows some sort of 4K situation. The dock is now updatable. So, so... Oh, yeah, that's... And that's so weird. You can you can do a firmware update to the dock. So what yeah. what people are suspecting is that in the future, when a new switch comes out that is 4K capable, they can just release a patch to the old dock to make it work. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I have plugged it in. Let's see if it works now. It might just not work honestly because uh, sometimes when you're fiddling around with 4K, like it, the signal just won't go through. Well, it should go through, but it should it should be a much lower resolution. It should be 1080p, and it should say that. Uh, it just worked. Uh, let's see. Yeah. 4K at 60 hertz. It says all of the same stuff. Oh, well, okay then. Interesting. What does this mean? <laughs> We're learning a lot right now. Yes. Uh, hmm. Hmm. So, hmm. so this is the cable that came with the Mario Edition Switch. This cable might also... Oh, no, no, no. Wait, am I lying? No, I'm not lying. Yeah, it supports UHD at 60 hertz. Okay. Where's my older cable now? I have one in the living room. Should I really go run and get that? No. I feel like I should. <laughs> Maybe we should do one of those things where we move on to the next topic. And uh, okay. and I also and I spend my time testing the other thing because well the next the next topic is related to this topic okay what is it so it's um apparently our good friends at Bloomberg are digging their feet into the ground and conf and saying that uh, developers do have 4K switch dev kits all right and you... that the 4K is, that it'll arrive in 2022. You read a little of that while I go run and find another cable. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is uh, this is from Bloomberg, uh, as told via Polygon. Uh, Bloomberg reported Wednesday of last week that developers uh, making Switch games were surprised. Sorry. Uh, Bloomberg reported Wednesday that developers making Switch games were surprised that Nintendo only released the OLED model because they have been working... Uh, on Switch developer kits that support 4K graphics. Bloomberg reported that developers at, at at least 11 game companies have been working on games using the 4K Switch kit uh, at both big studios and small. Nintendo told Bloomberg its information is inaccurate but did not expand further. Reports of an upgraded Nintendo Switch model that supports 4K has been circulating for a while. Bloomberg said in May that the hardware launching this October would output 4K when docked. Nintendo reportedly changed the design due to component shortages stemming from the COVID-19 pandemic, according to Bloomberg. And Nintendo changed its design only after handing out 4K-compatible kits to developers working on new games. Uh, do you need me to go back at all? No, I, I, I know this story already. Okay. Uh, is... Dev kits are are often distributed to video game developers well ahead of launch. These special consoles feature development tools necessary in creating games. Uh, developers working on Nintendo Switch games told Bloomberg that they expect their 4K Switch games uh, will be out sometime in 2022, during or after the second half of the year. Bloomberg reported that a 4K Switch will not is not expected out until 2022 at the earliest. Now, Nintendo in a rare sign of addressing rumors, responded to Bloomberg's report on Twitter uh, saying the publication falsely claims that the company is providing developers with tools to make 4K Switch games. The company added, we have no plans for any new models other than the Nintendo Switch OLED, which will launch October 8th. And here is Nintendo... Well, you don't see it on Bob's screen, but... Here's, and this is from the Nintendo of Japan Twitter account. A news report on September 30th, 2021 falsely claims that Nintendo is supporting is supplying tools to drive game development for a Nintendo Switch with 4K support. To ensure correct understanding among our investors and, cons and customers, we want to clarify that this report is not true. We also want to restate that as we announced in July, we have no plans for any new model other than the Nintendo Switch OLED edition uh, which will launch on October 8th. On top of this, Zynga 
has also denied an element of the report telling Kotaku in a statement that Zynga does not have a 4K developer kit for Nintendo. Did Bob disappear again? It's just me? Okay. In that case, who has been reading uh, Batman Fear State? Because I'll be honest with you guys. I really like Detective Comics. I've been liking it for a while. But the mainline Bat series has been like really back and forth with me. Oh, hey, Bob's back. Hey, how you doing? I, I, I got, we got problems here, Will. Uh, this freaking, uh, this, the old one uh, is all is doing the same stuff. It says that it's really? also 4K60 compatible. Uh, now I'm trying to find a cable that I know for sure is HDMI 1.4, but I don't know if I have one around. This test is inconclusive, basically. Uh, it yes. looks like, as far as our tests, they're all HDMI 2.0. Yeah. So, uh, maybe the test we're doing is is not great, but I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to try it maybe later. Maybe I'll update you on Twitter or something uh, when I go. find an HDMI... To, when I find one that I know for sure is HDMI 1.4, I'm pretty sure like the one for the PlayStation that we have should be 1.4. I don't know, but uh, we have a podcast to do, so yeah, can't be screwing around too much. So I don't know where you left, but basically Nintendo had to tweet out denying the support completely, and Zynga even went as far as to say we do not have a 4K Switch dev kit. Oh. Zenga was the one that everybody was saying had it. Yes. What made them say that they didn't have it? Uh, Kotaku asked them, and they said, we do not have a 4K dev kit for the Switch. So who said that they had it? Probably Bloomberg. This all circles back to Bloomberg. What the fuck is wrong with Bloomberg? Okay, so so I saw this go around on, on the Twitters that 11 different developers said that uh, they had 4K dev kits. And uh, we heard about that before, that they had 4K dev kits. Yeah, we've and been people hearing about on, it for a while now. And, and people on Twitter were saying, 11 developers can't be lying. And one of the ones they kept talking about was Zenga, who has never made a console game before. They're the they're the Facebook company. Yeah. They make they make Facebook games. As far as I know, they've never made a console game before. Uh, so it would be weird. They're the Farmville company. It would be weird if they yeah. all of a sudden were making a Nintendo game. Well, they're bringing Star Wars Hunters to the Switch. Oh, okay. So that's the yeah. first game then. It, it, that was previously a mobile game, and and now yeah. it's being ported to the Switch. Uh, yeah, this are all their freaking games. Toon Blast, Toy Blast, <laughs> Farmville 2, Tropical Escape, Words with Friends 2. I just heard a story of people sending dick pics through Words with Friends. Do you believe that? I don't believe people are still playing Words with Friends. True. Uh, so... So, so I want to know what made them think that Zenga had one. Now, it could be that maybe... Zenga wanted to save their relationship with Nintendo, and maybe they were like, no, 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 no. we gotta say whatever they want. We never got it. When maybe they did see, get it. I, I think in the Bloomberg, the most recent Bloomberg article about the 4K dev kits, um, the information is based on accounts from employees at 11 different game companies. One of these sources included Zenga. Yeah. So like ever. Whoever Bloomberg, like whoever the, the sources were for Bloomberg's article, one of them was allegedly from Zenga. Very strange. Yeah. The, the whole, this whole situation is very strange. I don't think it's too absurd to think that Nintendo's thinking about 4K. And it, 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 these yeah, companies always no. need to think about the next console generation. I yeah, think what's absurd is, is everybody's obsession with the current Nintendo Switch generation becoming 4K. I think that yeah. is absurd. The obsession that everybody has with that. It reminds me of when the Wii was out. And uh, by about year two or year three... Everyone was saying, oh, the there's going to be an HD version of the Wii and it'll be out later this year. And they were saying that up until the launch of the Wii U. Yeah. 
that's a, that's another problem is that people who are inside who know the deal might see something like the Wii U and be like, oh, that's a that's an addition to that's a new version of the Wii or that's an addition. It, it's it's something is an add on to the Wii that makes it yeah. HD. Because you look at the Wii U and you think that is an addition to the Wii. That is not a new console. So the people who are leaking this or the people who have inside information aren't always going to be right. They're just going to, they might just, that's just what they perceive of their insider information. Um, But it's also possible that nobody has insider information (laughs) and they're all full of shit. I don't know what makes Bloomberg think that 11 different people uh, are. that's another thing. People were like, 11 different companies can't lie. No, but one can, and that could be Bloomberg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very strange. Also, too, oftentimes, uh, dev kits are slightly more powerful than retail release consoles. Mm-hmm. Because they're designed to make like the game as optimized as possible, and then they'll scale it down for a retail release. So but- it is, it's entirely possible that, yeah, Nintendo revised the dev kits, then they include 4K support, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get a retail 4K Switch anytime soon, at least. Jeffrey Sorensen says that Bloomberg thinks 11 companies have 4K dev kits because 11 companies have 4K dev kits. Oh, because 11 companies have dev kits, period. <laughs> That's, I mean... So, so the OLED Switch dev kit has, I think, uh, it has more RAM. Uh, I don't remember how yeah. much. I think 4... I, I mean, I think eight gigabytes compared to f- the four that the Switch has. I think I know it has more. Oh, he does mean 4K dev kits, says Jeffrey Swartzen. Well, Zanga yeah. just confirmed that they don't. So who's telling the truth? Somebody's lying. It could be Nintendo. It could be Bloomberg. It could be Zanga and Nintendo. <laughs> Somebody's lying. This is the article uh, that lines up with the timings when the author, when this author started writing it. Patent reveals Nintendo is working on upscaling technology. This was uh, on Friday. Oh, that's another thing people are saying. People are saying that um, Nintendo, uh, Nintendo had to drop this information to be to tell people they're not working on uh, upscaling technology. I don't think it's absurd for them to be working on upscaling technology. Again, I think that they absolutely are working on their next console. Yeah, but I'm sure Sony is currently working on the PlayStation 6 right now. That's not that's not a surprise. But I also have to be... I've been very uh, uh, pessimistic about Nintendo in general because I have little faith that they do anything that anybody wants. <laughs> Everybody always wants like the 4K Switch, and I'm like, no, that's not gonna freaking happen. Everybody wants Sora and Smash Brothers, and I'm like, no, that's not gonna happen. And then here we go, we got Sora and Smash Brothers. Yeah. Um. Anyway, this article from Nintendo Life says patent reveals Nintendo is working on upscaling technology, and it says patents are always a rather intriguing tr- thing to track in the technology industry. Sometimes they represent ideas and products that you'll never see in the light of day, and uh, or occasions when. They give clues to future releases. A freshly released U.S. patent application could be the latter as it addresses technology that could all that could allow Nintendo to boost visuals in its hardware. Uh, opened on the 25th of March uh, and released publicly yesterday, so the 30th of September at the time of writing of this article, the application is titled Systems and Methods of Machine Learned Image Conversion. And though the initial language can be a head scratcher, it is essentially an idea similar to NVIDIA's DLSS. That is Deep Learning Subsampling, a super, Deep Learning Super Sampling, which we've talked about before. Uh, that was a big rumor about the Switch Pro. People were saying that it would utilize NVIDIA's DLSS, which I think requires a separate dedicated chip somewhere, either in the dock or on the Switch itself, uh, which uh, neither the OLED Switch nor the dock has. Um, or more than a Tegra X1, whatever the Switch has. Um, what makes this application intriguing is that Nintendo is clearly exploring the internal... Un- exploring this internally a named party on the application is alexandra alex alex andre alexandre del atre i can't i can't read will 
who is a co-founder of Nintendo European Research and Development. It's also acknowledged in the introduction of the patent that this is an area being explored through the industry. Machine learning can give computers the ability, this is the, the patent quote, machine learning can yeah. give computers the ability learned, the ability learn a specific task without expressly expressly programming the computer for that task one time a machine learning system is one type of machine learning system is called convulsional neural networks a class of deep learning neural net networks such networks and other forms of machine learning can be used to for example help with okay we know what we we know what machine learning is um Image up conversion is a technique that allows for a conversion of images, blah, blah, blah. We know what upscaling is. Uh, ultimately, it shouldn't be a surprise that Nintendo is reaching is researching upscaling through machine learning as it is likely to be a vital factor should the company opt to retain a Switch-style form factor while offering greater graphic fidelity in the future. Whether Nintendo will still utilize NVIDIA technology in future devices is also interesting. If it develops its own solution, it may not need uh, NVIDIA's DLSS tools. Of course, depending on what you believe, there are reports that 4K development units are already out in the wild. <sighs> so, uh, I, yeah, it's not absurd at all that they're working on their own uh, upscaling. I think that that totally makes yeah. sense. It's also not absurd if they if they have 4K development kits somewhere. Um, but it is a little fishy that someone's lying, whether <laughs> it be Nintendo, Zango, or Bloomberg. In that whole yeah. scenario about the 4K dev kits. One thing that I'm willing to bet a lot of money on is that these 4K uh, dev kits are for a next generation, not the current generation. If they even exist. Uh, and same thing with this 4K upscaling. I don't think... Uh, I, I think that, especially if they're just making a patent now, this thing is not fleshed out. So. Yeah, I don't know. It's... I think people are just still so hung up on the fact that we haven't gotten a 4K Switch yet. And seeing how the Switch OLED really is not that, even though it clearly could have been. Now people are just looking for any any excuse, any, any, any sign that there might be a, a 4K Switch. And I think it's, it's a waste of time. Honestly, <laughs> and Nintendo, if, if they are going to make a 4K Switch, they'll release it when they're ready to release it. In the meantime, enjoy what you have. You know, it's still a very capable system. It's still getting games for it. They're still getting, you know, they're still getting some really, you know, great looking games, really powerful games that run relatively fine on it. So I just think that, you know, worry about something else. <laughs> I think people are just afraid to be wrong. <laughs> Like just eat it, well, dude. Like like everybody was banging the drum of the of the Switch Pro, and it was just I just like there was no information. The yeah. information we got was conflicting, and uh, it just didn't seem like it was happening. And then and then it didn't happen, and I, and then everybody shut up. Everybody acted like, oh, this isn't the one. It's still happening. When? Yeah. A, a lot of the people who are still on the the Switch Pro rumors, a lot of them think that it's still coming. And that uh, the uh, or or that the Switch Pro was an idea in Nintendo's brain, and they opted for the OLED Switch because parts are cheaper and 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 it's hard to get parts for. Uh, I mean, that's that is very possible that huh? they were gonna that this was going to be a 4K Switch, and they opted against it. I, I think there was probably many different. There's probably many different revisions yeah. of this. They probably, had, it, of course, yeah. whenever there's a console, they come up with a bunch of different ideas, and then they get nixed until they find the good one. Mm -hmm. so so yeah I, I of course that was probably an idea in their brain whether or not it was all the way fleshed out or not i have no idea but i, I I'd, I'd be yeah. willing to bet they at least looked into it um but still i don't th i don't i was never of the mind that we were getting a 4k switch anything because nintendo is always yeah. behind in in technology um so that i think that's the end of that i i think the next generation sure uh yeah but your current switch right now i think you got another year or two until uh probably two until you get uh yeah a new hardware from nintendo that is anything more than 1080p 
Uh, and, and, and Nintendo had to come out and make a statement because they just released a new thing and they don't want their investors to get scared and they and they don't want people yeah. to not buy the new thing because they're going to wait for the next one. There are people who... Uh, I saw people who were like, ugh, I, I waited... I, I shouldn't have got the Switch when I got it. Meanwhile, they got it like a year ago. Yeah. And it's like, who cares? Like, your, yours is just yeah. as capable. It's not a big deal. Uh, or there's people who are like, I'll wait till the next one. It's like, you're going to be waiting forever. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you bought the old, sure, you bought the old version, but the old version has all of these games available for it. It's still a useful device. Mm -hmm. You can still get a lot out of it right now. It still so, plays everything. Yeah. I, I, I never play portable, so. Oh, no, that's a lie. Uh, I've been playing Breath of the Wild for uh, for like a couple hundred hours. Oh, no, actually, it's like a hundred hours so far. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I have 20 hours in that game or like 25 hours and at the end of this I'm going to have like I'm going to have like a thousand and, uh, and yeah. only 20 of them is me actually playing the game anyway um, we got a bunch of notifications I think uh, no we yeah. didn't we got Fred with 28 months thank you so much and Fadud Dud with 12 months thank you so much uh, anyway uh, let's move on. I, I, I'm yeah. still puzzled about this 4K situation because I think we just proved that the old HDMI cable is also HDMI 2.0, which I feel like we would have yeah. known about already. I feel like that's something we somebody would have figured out by now. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, what do we got to talk about now? Uh, should we just get to... The Smash Brothers stuff? Yeah, why did we put Konami up? Oh, because we didn't have an article about Smash Brothers stuff. Yeah. I'm all I'm all out of order. <laughs> so there was the Oh, you put it all the way at the bottom. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, I'm moving. The there was the uh what's what's the it's not a Smash Brothers direct. It's a Smash Brothers live stream featuring Masahiro Sakurai. Sakurai presents is the official okay. uh name for okay. it. So before they unveiled the final DLC character, they unveiled three Me Fighter costumes, <laughs> and it's like, and you get oh Octoling, oh that's cute, whatever. Oh and Judd from Splatoon, oh that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. And then all of a sudden, the Doom Slayer, dude, and he looks awesome. I was he like, whoa, so I might just spend the dollar and buy this costume. It, he looks rad as hell. This is the first thing they did. All right, so I, so what I did, I went to bed late as I usually do. And what yeah. I decided to do, I wanted to wake up for this. So I left my laptop on with the live stream blasting on full blast so that it would just start and wake me up. So yeah. it just started. Masahiro Sakurai woke me up and then they go, we're doing the me costumes. And I was like, yeah. through my, through my, through my glazed over eyes, I was like, okay, Octoling. Okay. Friggin' uh, the friggin' cat guy. And then all of a sudden they're like, bam, 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 bam. I'm like, holy shit. There he uh, is, the Doom so Slayer. Cool. So rad. And I want to be clear, because I'm seeing a lot of articles get this wrong. This is the Doom Slayer. Doom Guy, according to modern canon, is a separate character. He, that's also Sakurai's fault. Sakurai, in the yeah. presentation, says they also call him Doom Guy. Right. And I can't hate Sakurai because he just seems like such a nice guy. <laughs> but people need to, like, this is specifically the Doom Slayer. Mm -hmm. Doom Guy is from Doom 1 and 2. Doom Slayer is from Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal. And Doom Eternal actually makes reference to a previous Doom Guy. So, hope, hope that's squared away. I would also like to remind everyone, especially our good friends Dan Seibert and Gilly the Kid, that the lore of Doom Eternal is stupid. <laughs> fucking fucking stupid we know that dan is very interested in the lore yeah it's very important to him uh, uh anyway uh so that was great i was very happy was to see this see, uh doom slayer as yeah. as a dlc i hope the music I, I, is there do we know if the music's there i don't know if the music uh, do they i don't think they add the music with the me costumes do they i don't know they played the song yeah uh, they, they just need one that one song, that that one song from there. Because when Doom music kicks in, look at yeah. Out. Sans had music. 
Oh, okay. from Undertale. Uh, no Doom music. They're saying. Okay, I don't. I don't know. All right, that's a shame. Anyway, uh, then we had anyway. a long uh, Sakurai presents all about uh, Sora. Yes. Well, we did it, everybody. Sora from Kingdom Hearts has been revealed as the final DLC character coming to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Here he is. Wow. Hooray. So, so I was not. I was. I was. I did not see this coming. Uh, now he makes perfect sense. And he should be the last DLC fighter because he's a big yeah. deal. Uh, I had zero faith that Nintendo would be able to pull it off. That they yeah. they seem to not have, really have a problem with licensing, but this seemed to be like the hardest one for them to get because yeah. it has a Disney tie-in. Yeah, that uh, they actually revealed in this uh, live stream that when they did the poll for Smash Brothers on Wii U and 3DS, you know what character would you like to see in Smash Brothers? That Sora was far and away the number one choice. Right. But it's taking taking all this time to get him in a Smash Brothers game. Right. And I and I don't think that this is necessarily a Square Enix problem because Cloud and Sephiroth and uh Hero from Dragon Quest are all in Smash Brothers. This is very clearly a Disney a Disney problem because I guess on some level Disney has a stake in the character of Sora and Kingdom Hearts in general. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to whatever lawyers at Nintendo and Square <laughs> pulled this off because this is, you know, no pun intended. This is a Herculean task. So, 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 I'm so sure just to get the fucking Mickey's head as the keychain on that, the Keyblade. I'm honestly surprised about that. And and, and looking at yeah. some of the gameplay, I thought it wasn't there, but it is very clearly there in the. In the it's in very the clearly there. Yeah, uh, that's the most surprising thing I think is is yeah. that like he's mostly a Square Enix character, I guess. I know Disney has a hand in it, but I'm not sure how yeah. much of a hand they have in the licensing of Sora himself. Um, yeah. But the but the Mickey head as the, as the little uh, keychain that alone I thought was going to be a legal nightmare. Yeah, and uh, they could have very easily changed that, and I'm sure most people wouldn't have noticed. Well. I wouldn't have noticed. I know they changed part of the level that's included in the game with Hollow Bastion. They changed part of that to remove uh, Donald and Goofy. Um, so I wouldn't have. I would totally expect them to do that, but they left Mickey on the Keyblade. <laughs> yeah. So th they showed a lot of Mickey and uh, and Goofy. Oh no, and Donald and Goofy. They showed a lot of Donald and Goofy in uh, in the the direct, but they were just showing footage of of uh, Kingdom Hearts and stuff. A PlayStation uh, 4 version of Kingdom Hearts, yes. specifically. Yeah, it says it in the corner. This is the PlayStation 4 version. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Smash Brothers is a very prestigious game. Having your character in it means yeah. a lot. It's the highest selling fighting game of all time. Uh, so, I, 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 most companies would be honored to be asked to have their character in the game. It's also good publicity for any company. It's the reason why any American cares about Fire Emblem. Um, yeah. But uh, Kingdom Hearts, I don't think, needs any publicity. I don't think Disney really cares about that. So no. uh, that's why I thought this would be uh, this would be hard to do. Now they released that poll that was for the Wii U and 3DS version where they asked what yes. people would be excited for, and they released that poll like late in the life cycle of the game. I think I think yeah. I think right after the game was released, uh, they did that when the DLC was dropping, and it was too yeah. late for them to get characters. So that was for the next game, and the next game he said was in development for like an absurdly long time. Yeah. Well, he. At the time, they said that um, Bayonetta was the winner of that poll. But they clarified it by saying, like, Bayonetta was the most feasible character to include in the game. Yeah, I don't think they of said all. that he that Bayonetta won the poll. I think that they said that's the one that no, they picked. <laughs> that's the one that they could e most easily put in right. the game. Right, based but, on, yeah. but now they clarified the number one pick was Sora. I'm surprised yeah. it wasn't Goku. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe they're leaving that out. Yeah. Uh, hey, Woods in the chat. He says the only oh, other hey. game that Sora has ever appeared in other than Kingdom Hearts was World of Final Fantasy. 
And yeah, it was just him. No Disney stuff. I think he's easier because he's Square, not Disney. But the Mickey head surprised me too. Is the Mickey head in World of Final Fantasy? Yeah. I need to know that now. I'm also... I Sora... Sakurai says Sora means sky in Japanese. I thought yeah. Sora meant sun. I mean... I'm not one to argue that. I don't know Japanese. Maybe it means both. Uh, he's got the Keyblade in World of uh, Final Fantasy. No keychain, though. Oh, wait. Okay. It does have the keychain. Keychain right there, baby. Okay. Little tiny, little tiny man keychain. All right. Very strange. I mean, may, I mean, Square must have licensed Sora, and the patent includes the the keychain <laughs> so they yeah. got maybe they screwed disney there um although i think at the end of the you know at the end of the whole thing when they list the credits and it's like copyright whatever and it lists all the companies i think disney is listed as one of those companies oh i think i mean they have a i mean they have to have a stake in sora yeah so so Sun, according to Google Translate, is Taiyo in Japanese. Okay. But that's Google Translate. Uh, so anyway, Sora, as a Smash fighter, is incredibly fast and very, yes. very, very light and very, yeah. very floaty. He's He can jump extremely high. And his recovery is absolutely insane. But and he has that dash move that like keeps you in the air for a little bit longer. Yeah, so he yeah, so he has an up B and also a side B to recover, and the yeah. side B goes up. So uh he looks insane. But he's incredibly light and so uh uh Sakurai says that uh he is very easy to uh to uh what do they call launch. He has a very yeah. high launch distance so he's gonna be uh uh if you can get your hands on him he's gonna be easy to knock off the stage um yeah. so uh so yeah i'm actually i think he looks like a great character i'm excited to yeah. to, to try him out and he's got the keyblade so he's got a really long reach yeah. uh, i think wood pointed out on twitter that he is another sword fighter and that means i think that makes 20 sword fighters or something <laughs> so uh there are a lot of sword fighters and that is the only complaint I've seen about him being a sword fighter on Twitter. Oh, he wasn't complaining. Like, Wood wasn't complaining. No, just I to know. Be clear. I know. Like, usually every time there's another sword fighter, everyone's like, oh, fucking another sword fighter. Oh, this one, nobody, nobody seems to, nobody seems to mind. No, I'm se so inevitably there's always people who are pissed about this stuff and yeah. i i knew that like there was no way they could please everybody i thought for sure we were gonna see a firestorm on twitter this morning but yeah, uh I was, I, my expectations were low but like real low i think this was like the only way they could have minimized that and and for the most part i'm seeing very positive things I do see yeah. a lot of people saying, I'm happy for everybody else, but this is... Blah, 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 yeah. blah. I, I think he, Leffen, who is like, you know, he's a notorious uh, crum, curmudgeon, uh, yeah. he said some dumb shit. <laughs> I think the only the only thing I've seen where, like, people were upset, they were like, oh, it should have been Master Chief. Yeah, but. I see a lot of people saying that. That's, again, that's only us Americans who are going to say that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think this is... Like I, I am legitimately surprised and shocked that they were able to get Sora for this, mm -hmm. but I think this is the best possible character to go out on. Uh, Leffen, all... Leffen says yeah. this. So, so this is the end, huh? Feels weird. Happy for the people who wanted Sora, but he looks low tier AF. LMAO. Wish they added simple and clean though. What's simple and clean? I don't know what that means. Simple and clean was the uh, the pop song from the first game. Ah. Uh... It's actually what I used for my Twitter announcement of this episode. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I, you always do a. You always do a music. Simple and clean is the way that you're making me feel tonight. It's hard to let it go. Come on, that that is a that is J-pop. No, keep going. J-pop was popular. Keep going. That's all I know. That's okay. all I know. I only know that part of the song because that was in all the trailers. Um. I mean, I also don't like it when people look at this 
look at these announcements. I mean, Leffen is one of yeah. the best Smash Brothers players in the world, so he knows a lot right. more than any of us. But uh, I don't like when people look at that and then go, low tier garbage character or oh my god he's op because you don't know until you get the character in your hand right i think people right. were saying freaking minecraft steve was op until we got him and then everyone's like not nah, everybody he sucks <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah i mean he doesn't so he doesn't come out till october 18th which also i was a little disappointed about i thought uh for sure they were gonna be like boom he's out now go play him yeah uh but i mean we could wait uh, today is the day that Nicktoons All-Star Brawl comes out. And like I said earlier, uh, I'm seeing footage of it and I'm not too impressed. I think it looks pretty bad. That's, that's sad. <laughs> uh, Bob hasn't seen the crazy combos. That's true. I haven't seen any of the crazy combos that uh, Sora can do. He, I think he looks great. and and But I also am a big fan of Captain Falcon and I really can't play yeah. any other characters that aren't super fast like that. So um, I... Uh, I I think he looks good because I like Captain Falcon. Some people think Captain Falcon's low tier. So, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'd am i love to give it a try. One thing that is uh, positive about Nicktoons All-Star Brawl that AJ let me know is that you can use the D-pad. Oh. Can't do that in Smash Bros. D-pad's only for no. taunts. That And that, like, screws me up a lot. Mm-hmm. All right. So, that's not all we learned uh, today no. about, from, from so the it, direct. It's funny because, because you know, during the direct, Sakurai was talking about you know his his out his outfit and it's from all the different games. And if you have a save file from, I forgot what fucking Kingdom Hearts game is on Switch currently. If you have a save file and something's gonna happen, you get you you get an extra song. If you have a save file from a particular Kingdom Hearts game that's on Switch already, you get an extra song. As he was saying this, I began to look up. Are the Kingdom Hearts games, like the, the the actual, the main series, are the main series Kingdom Hearts games on Switch? As I'm Googling this, Sakurai announces that Kingdom Hearts, the original trilogy, will be coming to Nintendo Switch. However, asterisk, cloud version. Yeah, cloud version. Yes. So, 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 is the save file on your Switch? It's a cloud For... version. Is the well, save the file on your file, Switch or, or, or the yeah. cloud? So, are you talking about to get the song? Uh, yeah. Not, not these games. So, which game? Which game not... is the save file, though? Oh, let me, let oh me it's that rhythm it game, isn't it? It's the rhythm yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Melody of Memories. Uh, says That's it. AU Retriever. Yeah. Melody of Memories, yeah. Um, but... Yeah, so Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 Remix, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue, and Kingdom Hearts 3. Those names, guys, are all coming to Switch at a later date. They will be the cloud version, um, but now you'll, you'll actually be able to get to play these games, which is nice, because when Banjo-Kazooie was announced for Smash Ultimate, Sakurai said, the Banjo-Kazooie games are available on the Xbox platform. Play it on that. <laughs> Damn. Uh, RGT85 responded to this tweet by Nintendo and said, Cloud? An old man's going to yell at a cloud later today over this. So I guess you'll find yep. out on his on his uh, YouTube. Uh, was I playing the direct? Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, so in this uh, uh, presentation, I'm sorry, they showed Melody of Memories a little bit. Uh, and then they showed uh, footage of these games... The, the, the main line uh, Kingdom Hearts games and it says in the quarter PlayStation 4 game footage because uh, yeah. this is the cloud it's going to be cloud gaming and it's probably going to look yeah. a lot like this uh, but yeah. it'll be through the internet so make sure you have a good connection before you and if people are wondering why they're going this route I know f I know that they actually don't have the source code for the original PS2 versions of Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 when they did the remakes, they had to rebuild the games from the ground up. Oh my God. So, yeah, that's why. They didn't save the source code for a lot of games back then. That's why uh, Silent Hill has never been ported properly. All right, I raised Will again. I lowered him because uh, there was a moment when he was incredibly loud for a second for some reason, and then I lowered it. But now everybody's complaining that you're too low, so I raised you again. All right. Uh, that's what they call me. Problem child. Uh, So... 
so th there's usually a demo for the cloud versions if you are afraid that your internet might not be able to handle it uh usually you, yeah. on the eShop you can download a demo uh and play it for like an hour just to make sure that your internet's good so don't worry if you haven't played a cloud version of a game before uh you can try that also uh there's plenty of cloud games on the switch right now that also have demo versions yeah. like uh control hitman i think assassin's creed i don't know if that's japan only though that, that might be japan only anyway that concludes the final sakurai presents uh yeah. possibly ever but specifically for the smash brothers ultimate uh game yes. he, he's talked about stopping making smash brothers since brawl so uh and he's getting old he's got to stop stressing over yeah. this stuff um, yeah, he keeps going to the hospital every time he makes a Smash Brothers game. Yes, it's literally taking a toll on his life. Now, I found this post on Reddit that says, so is it okay to be emotional? Is it okay to be emotional about the last Sakurai Presents Smash DLC character? Is it? It feels kind of weird, doesn't it? This might be the last possible public appearance of Sakurai under the Smash Brothers flag. This is the last DLC character coming to Ultimate. We might get a future Smash Brothers game. I mean, I'll, I'll be legitimately surprised if we don't, but I don't have, I don't think, I doubt they'll have the power to bring everyone again. So this last character feels special. Be it someone everyone expected, someone everybody uh, didn't care about, or something, or someone that legit no one even thought about. Uh, I hope they make a new trailer for Smash Bros. Ultimate with the same vein as the Everyone Is Here one from the first reveal. What do you guys think? Uh, and how are you feeling about it? Uh... I don't know how they could make another game after this. <laughs> I know, they, right? Like they they can't include eighty nine characters. No, no. Unless they just keep re releasing this game mm -hmm. over and over again, which would probably be a legal nightmare. But yeah, no, I don't see like they weren't kidding. This is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. This is the ultimate Super Smash Brothers. Anything after this is just like, why bother? It, it's incredibly hard to have that many characters in a in a competitive game and keep them all balanced. And I mean, every, yeah. there's people who are always going to complain that uh, there's uh, balance issues in Smash Brothers. But for having 89 fucking characters, it's incredibly yeah. well balanced. Yeah. Uh, Wood says, there's literally no way there will be another. This one is called Ultimate. What are they going to do? Ultimate 2 Electric Boogaloo? They did that with Marvel vs. Capcom. <laughs> yeah. They literally. Oh no! They called it Infinite. They called the next one Infinite. Yeah, and that game was trash. So um, so was Ultimate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I don't think this is the end of the Smash Brothers series. I think we're gonna get another one, but I feel well, like the next one has to be radically different. Yeah. Not necessarily in terms of gameplay style, but just in terms of like presentation and you know mentality. When this game was coming out, it l looked like it was gonna be a port from the the Wii U, and yeah. and, and even the footage kind of just looked like the Wii U game. Um, yeah. But I'm kind of happy that they based it off of the similar stuff they already had on the Wii U because they were able to do so much more with it. Yeah. Uh, I'd hope that the next game they could do the same thing like just add on what they already have but i don't think they'll be able to i don't think they'll be able to license yeah. all of these characters again it's, and i also yeah. don't think sakurai is going to be involved i think that they'll probably have no. new people i think they'll continue to make a new smash brothers with every console um yeah. but yeah i don't uh, I, I think that this is uh i kind of wish companies would just s heavily support the games that they already have that are already great like smash brothers is already great the way we have it like just yeah. just make the online better and it'll and it'll be a huge deal when when you do that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, people are emotional about this. Here's Jackson crying over over Sora being in Smash. I had a bet with him that Sora was not going to be in Smash. If I won, I get to have his stream key for Twitch for a day, which means I could stream whatever I want on his Twitch. Right. If he wins, I have to gift him ten subs, and he won, so I have to gift him ten, 10 subs. I also saw Misclick was uh, very emotional about this. Everybody's emotional. Except for yeah. me. Because it was 10 in the morning and yeah. I was very tired. Yeah. And also, like, 
full transparency, we were not Kingdom Hearts fans no. growing up. We weren't even like fans of Square Enix RPGs and whatnot. Um, and Kingdom Hearts to me it was like reading a Turkish dictionary. I have no <laughs> idea what the fuck is going on. Me, me and uh, Dan had a really good idea. We wanted yeah. to do a podcast, potentially a series of podcasts, where he explains Kingdom Hearts to me, mm-hmm. and I explain Metal Gear to him. Ooh. I don't know if I can That's do that not- anymore. It's been a while since I've played any Metal Gear games. Yeah, and uh, that you also gotta like remember the MSX games and... No. Because that's that's canon. Yeah, it's not important. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Metal Gear, yeah, yeah, Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2, you can kind yeah. of breeze through the lore of those. Yeah. They're, they're, they're kind of, there's a little bit of overlap between those and like Peace Walker and and uh, and uh, Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, speaking of Metal Gear, I would love Metal a new Gear. Metal Gear game, Will. I would love oh, yeah. to be tossed oh, back I. into that world. Well, good news, everyone. Konami is set to revive not only Metal Gear, but uh, Silent Hill, Castlevania, and other of its major major franchises. Japanese publisher will reveal major projects after a period of relative quiet. So Konami hasn't done anything with video games in a really long time other than well, porting their old stuff. Yeah, they've been porting their old stuff. They made Metal Gear Survive which everybody loves and has nothing bad to say about that. But basically since, uh, you know, the Phantom Pain, they haven't really released a big AAA all-new video games in any of their major franchises. But according to this report from Video Game Chronicles, Konami is set to ramp up its premium game development with new installments and remakes for its big franchises, including Metal Gear and Castlevania. According to... Publishing sources who spoke to VGC anonymously because they did not have permission to discuss these projects publicly. Konami's premium games output has slowed significantly in recent years. The last new Metal Gear game was 2018's critically acclaimed Metal Gear Survive, while the last mainline Castlevania release was 2014's Lords of Shadow 2. In the past decade, the company has arguably grown bigger, uh, grown a bigger reputation for its pachinko gambling games than for its premium PC and console games. However, following a restructuring of the company's game development division earlier this year, Konami is now focused on bringing back its biggest brands to the premium video game space. First, the first of these titles will be a new Castlevania game, with which sources describe as a reimagining of the series currently in development internally at Konami Japan, uh, with support from local external studios. There's been much speculation that Demon Souls studio Bluepoint could be working on a remake of Metal Gear Solid. However, VGC was told the series is actually being worked on by another external studio, Virtuous. Uh, established in 2014, Virtuous is one of the largest game developers in the world, focusing on supporting the development of major AAA games or bringing existing games to new platforms. Recently, it worked on the Switch port for Dark Souls Remastered, The Outer Worlds, and the Bioshock Collection. Well, there you go. So, we've heard this rumor about Bluepoint making a, a, a Metal Gear game or a remake of Solid. I would love that. Uh, Metal yeah. Gear Solid's amazing. I love Twin Snakes, which is a remake of the original Metal Gear yes. Solid for the GameCube. Uh, but Kojima had a big hand in that. I think Kojima not being a part of a Metal Gear game is a giant mistake. However... Yeah. I think Blue Point can still do a good job remaking a Kojima game. I yeah. don't think Konami can do a good job making a new <laughs> Metal Gear game, which already happened. What do you think the Metacritic of Metal Gear Survive is? Uh, I know it's low. I know it's very low. Let's let's play a, let's play a game here. Well, what do you think the Metacritic is? I think you might be surprised. Uh, let me let me know if I'm hot or cold. Um, is it in the twenties? No, absolutely not. I don't the know tens. any games that are in the twenties. It's sixty. Well, Jesus Christ. What? Well, it's sixty. No, that's still bad. But God, dude, give him some credit. No. It's at least the same that, engine. That's way too good for Metal Gear Survive. Now, what do you think Metal Gear Phantom Pain is? Phantom Pain, Kojima's last Metal Gear game notorious 
ha- notoriously has problems because he was cut off at the very end of development. Notoriously and, has and problems, it, but yet people still overrated that game. So no, I'm going to say it's that in game's the nine. incredible. It, what, is, it is not. <laughs> what? Give me a hard number, Will. Uh, f- ninety-three. Oh my god, dude, nailed it. What? Oh, there you go. Right on the money. And- Absolutely phenomenal game. The gameplay loops incredible. The story, not so much because it kind of just story, it kind of just abruptly ends. Really bad, even for a Metal Gear game. The gameplay loop is too involved and too it's too much for the type of game that it actually is. <laughs> There's a lot in it. I didn't do half of the shit that's in the game. I my whole goal in the game. Listen, the game is what you make out of it. And the what I wanted yeah. to do was I wanted to be a pacifist. I didn't want to kill anybody. So I built all my weapons up to be uh tranquilizers and shit and uh I didn't kill a single person. That's not true. I killed one person by accident. My Jeep rolled them over when I jumped out of it. But uh that I had a I had a freaking blast doing it that way. It was very hard, especially towards the end. But I had a freaking blast. I don't think I, I ever hundred percented it. I remember getting to a point where I was basically I was trying to just follow the store the main story, mm-hmm. uh, and I and I got to a point where I was essentially punished for not playing the side missions and upgrading all my weapons and my side characters. There is a point I, where you have to grind a little bit. Yes. Yeah, and I did not feel like grinding. Uh, during a Metal Gear Solid game, there I is felt like a, that was a poor choice. <laughs> the way that you pick missions is a little weird because it's kind of hard to tell uh, what is important and what's not. Yeah, I mean, there's like an asterisk near the story missions, but there are side missions that are important to play. Yeah. Um, however, I did enjoy just dropping into. I think it's Afghanistan. I, yeah. I did enjoy just dropping into the world and completing like a bunch of missions at once. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed that gameplay loop, and I miss it. I I want to go back and play it. Um, I really liked Ground Zeroes, and also if that Phantom Pain. If the Phantom Pain was more like Ground Zeroes, where they just drop you into a big open world and just let you explore and like fuck around in, that's one thing. But you keep having to go back to Mother Base and building up Mother Base and building up your weapons and creating relationships with all the side characters and crap. Not what I want. I think everybody should play Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. It's two and a half hours long. It yes. could it could be way shorter if you really want it to be. There's a decent amount of content after that if you want to keep playing. Uh, it's a quick little sandbox, but the gameplay loop's incredible. Uh, and uh, it's incredibly cheap. Actually, it's, it's 20 bucks on Steam right now. Uh, yeah. But you can frequently find it on a deal. It's been free on PlayStation Plus before. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if it's on Game Pass. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ground Zeroes is is might be better than Phantom Pain, but Phantom Pain's just a longer version of Ground Zeroes. Yeah, I think it's also important to note here that Konami they haven't been working on games. Uh, they don't give a shit about games. They uh yeah. they are a massive company that does a lot of shit. Uh, for example, uh, they also aside from being a video game publisher, they also distribute trading cards, anime, tokusatsu pachinko machines slot machines and arcade cabinets yeah and they also have um, oh they also have a uh, health and fitness clubs yeah. across japan which i think is probably their biggest money maker outside from pachinko machines and video games mm. and they also have like their own bottled water and shit so yeah. i frequently see uh, things with konami on them and i'm like oh that's weird yeah at the at the start of like the ps4 xbox one generation konami basically like hardlined we don't want to make video games anymore. We're going to focus on so many other things because video, you know, video games were getting more expensive to make and, you know, they weren't seeing a good return on the investment. So rather than, you know, re, you know, fixing that problem, making good games, people actually want to buy and play. They just decided to close everything, fire Kojima and, you know, you know, rest on their laurels and whatnot, not release anything worthwhile and just, you know, work on to be fair, good uh, ports and collections of their classic games. Now, it seems like there's a, there's been a restructuring of the overall business and somebody realizes that Konami actually has valuable IP that people want to play. 
So it, it does make sense if you look at it from the perspective of a Japanese businessman, because uh, yeah. you're looking at, so you haven't made games in a while. Then all of a sudden here comes Kojima and you're like, this guy's going to be a moneymaker. Everybody's going to love whatever he pulls out. And then he's like, I want to go big. I'm getting Kiefer Sutherland. And it's like, great. We love yeah. that you're going to get an American actor and everybody's going to love it. It's going to be awesome. And he's like, I need another $5 million. And they're like, oh, I don't want to do that, but okay, here you go. And then he delays the game and then he asks for more money and then more money and then more money. And then eventually they're like, you got to just stop. We, we, yeah. we don't think we're going to get a return out of you anymore. We don't make friggin' games that much. Uh, we have little faith in you. Get out. And then they fired him and then they finished the game anyway, put it out and it sold a lot. But it yeah. could have been way better if they didn't do that. Um, but uh, now here they are. They, they they reaped the benefits of Metal Gear Solid Five, but uh, they haven't made a game again because they lost their big guy. Yeah. And also the Castlevania guy left and made uh, uh, freaking uh, Blood Bloodstained. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, also uh, multiple Castlevania, multiple sorry, multiple Silent Hill games are currently in development at various external uh, development studios. Right. So that'll be nice because if there's one franchise Konami really hates, it's Silent <laughs> Hill. I have no doubt that they could make a lot of money pulling out these old franchises. Um, yeah, absolutely. Al there is also still talks that Kojima has uh, something to do with either a Silent Hill or a Metal Gear game with them. Yeah. He recently signed a contract with uh, with Microsoft, but that doesn't mean he can't do both. Yeah. Um, and I would love to see him make another game. I, I really liked uh, uh, Death Stranding. I barely played any of it. <laughs> It was, it was, I really enjoyed my time with it. It was hard to pick back up after not playing it for a while. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's it about, oh, and they also apologize for making a bad soccer game. They want to breeze through yeah. this real quick. Uh, yeah, I'll breeze through this real quick. So the one video game they have been putting out relatively, you know, with any, you know, relative pattern is, uh, Pez Ugh. Pro Evolution Soccer. Um, they've recently rebanded it as eFootball, and it is yeah. currently the worst reviewed game in Steam's history. <laughs> I what's the saddest part about this story is that I know a guy that looks like that. <laughs> it's sad. That's that's funny. Uh, yeah, so they rebranded uh, Pro Evolution Soccer, also known as Pez, into eFootball. Um, it is available on Steam, it is free to play, and it is already the worst reviewed game in Steam's history. At the time of writing, it has uh, 4,842 reviews, 91% of which are negative, leading to an overall Damn. overwhelmingly negative rating. Whether this is a fair reflection of the game or simply an outpouring of player anger is open is an open question. Uh, this, this writer has played a couple of games, and y'all, <sighs> eFootball isn't half bad. I'm not sure I quite get the new systems. All right, so this guy's saying it's it's okay, but the player faces are truly atrocious. Ooh, they're all stiff. Yeah, I hate it. Uh, is Pez the one that releases the same game every year? Or no, that's FIFA for the Switch, right? They release the same FIFA game with Switch. just a, yeah. with updated roster. Yeah. Yeah. Why do people like soccer games? It seems like they're getting screwed every year. I know. I mean, even Madden changes it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, please. After so yeah, you. Konami's back making AAA games. Going to be a long road, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean they're going to be good games. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, we get uh, some good talent involved, or else it might yeah. we might get some Garbo. Yeah. I want to talk about this real quick. Uh, I want to play this very badly. Uh, introducing Super Mario Eclipse, a new Super Mario Sunshine mod featuring an expanded story and much, much more. Uh, also a bad voice acting in the beginning. I'm not going to play it, but uh, yeah, you can look up a little video on it. It's just, it's, it's here, here we are here uh, right out of the gate. We got Mario running out of Peach's castle in the Mario Sunshine engine, and he's running towards the uh, airplane that he landed in, in Sunshine. Um, so there's new environments. There's new things to do in the old environments. Uh, you can play as freaking, uh, what's his name? The guy who's also in Zelda, the quick man, the fast guy. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, you can play as him. Yeah. Uh, 
you can play as him. You could also uh, there's a beta where you can play as the Dark Mario, the 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 oh, wow. the one with the paint. Um, yeah, yeah. So this looks freaking awesome. Uh, uh, Sunshine, not my favorite engine to play Mario games in, but I'm curious to see how uh, well this is. I want to try it out. Yeah. Uh, you can download it. You, you, a lot of these. Uh, oh, you, here's here's Luigi. I think you can play as Luigi. Nice. Yeah, you can play as Luigi. I think that might also be beta. And he's got a little sunglasses on, and he does a super jump. Uh, so a lot of these uh, Mario mods, you have to have the ROM already, and it just runs a patch on the ROM. So uh, yeah. So it's not illegal to distribute, technically. At least that's like the legalese that they hide behind. Um, it doesn't mean they can't get a cease and desist. Uh, but uh, for the most part, they're relatively safe. Um, yeah, and, and, it, and it was noted in the article that Nintendo generally doesn't go after mods as much as they do fan game, like full fan games. Yeah, because that's you're, they're not providing the game technically. They're they're hoping that you already yeah. have the ROM, and you could have the ROM through legal means. You could rip it yes. yourself, even though that's more or less impossible to do. <laughs> um, source through YouTube. Uh, I, I'm going to download this and I'll probably play it on, on Twitch. And if you don't like Twitch, you could watch it on YouTube.com slash Wolf Den Clips whenever it happens, probably within the next few weeks. I'm very busy within the next few weeks. Uh, uh, Bob, I would just like to point out that uh, you currently have an ad for the Adam and Eve Satisfier Breathless on the side of your... Ooh. There it is, folks. Am I going to get kicked off Twitch for having a... Is that a... I'm not going to... I'm not going to talk about what type of dildo that is. That would be absurd. Yes. Will, why do you think I have that ad there? Why do you think? I I am guessing that you went to adamandeve.com for something. Yes. Not judging you. I'm just saying that I you bought went there... Six oh. dildos to bought- make a controller out of it. I didn't know you bought six. I bought six because I needed one. F- I needed up, down, left, right, B, and A. However, I decided instead of using six, I only needed three because I can make one of them a joystick. Up, down, left, right. Uh. And now I get now I get Adam and Eve ads. I'm not upset. But I will be if uh, that ends up getting me kicked off Twitch. <laughs> I'm gonna it's command shift and T for incognito window. I put in my credit card information. What am I gonna incognito window that for? I gotta you know? look. There is a comp there is a company that like will give you an incognito credit card. <laughs> yes. Things there like there that. are companies that uh that that do that, yeah. That like they sponsor yeah. YouTubers and stuff. Uh anyway. So I'm going to try this out. I think you have to join their Discord for a link. Ew, but I'll do it anyway. Um, All right, next we got uh, this Gun. Is, this is specifically for us and no one else in the chat. <laughs> so Gungrave yes. is getting a new game. I saw a trailer for this while we were doing the podcast and I didn't want to interrupt what you were saying and then I forgot about yeah. it. And I was like, what is this? Uh, I didn't hear about a Gungrave game. Yeah, Gungrave Gore is the new game in the series, and it's got character designs uh, from Ikimu- uh, Ikumi Nakamura. Oh, our favorite. The, fa- the, the famous uh, G- uh, Ghostwire Tokyo lady. And uh, we got a gameplay reveal. So the big news is that Ikumi Nakamura is doing the designs for Gungrave Gore, and the gameplay reveal, it looks exactly like the PS2 games. <laughs> <laughs> is that good or bad? I like it. <laughs> so Gungrave Gun- is a series. Uh, it, it's it's an anime game and show uh, yes. from way back. It started as, I think they released the game and the show like around the same time. It was it, the it, game it, first. It started as it a game an concept. Yeah. yeah. But, but the anime was very quickly after the game. Yeah. Uh so 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 the storyline storyline's great. It's yeah. uh two kids who like worked their way up the ranks of the yakuza. And yeah. uh and uh uh they like betray each other and then one of them turns into uh uh this like humanoid uh uh superhuman monster 
and it like yeah. time jumps a little bit in the anime and but the game yeah. is just him being the humanoid assassin monster yes. yeah. and, he, and he's getting revenge on the on the mafia yeah uh, and here so it is there there was the there was the original game. There was the sequel, Gungrave Overdose, which is very good. Um, there was the VR game, Gungrave VR, which came out not too long ago. Uh, More recently. Which I, which, yeah, I played that at E3. Um, I did not, and I know you you have you have the full game. I don't know. I don't know if you've played it. I never played it yet. Um, and now we're getting Gungrave Gore, a whole new game, uh, in the series. So this yeah. is very exciting. I'm a little interested. It's a very silly game. Like it's not. It's not like. Yeah. It's not like a great game, <laughs> but it's. No. But it's. No. It's, it's fun it's, to it's, mash through. Yeah, and it's funny because like it's a it's a big dumb silly game. Uh, it's it's fun, but the anime, the 26 episode anime, is like prestige drama, super serious. Like, holy crap. This, after this after the first episode the <laughs> yeah the first, episode, the first episode not so much everything after that and then everything there's a certain window where the anime is like is like an incredible drama and and yeah. then uh, and then it turns into this and it's very yeah. weird but we we liked this we were very drawn to gungrave because yeah. we liked trigun so much and it's made and by it's, the same guy yeah. um uh yoshiro night so, i think yeah uh so this so. was like the next thing he made after trigun uh, yeah, and I, th- I, th- I, honestly, I think this is better than Trigun. I think oh, the Gungrave anime is possibly my favorite anime. I don't think I ever finished the anime. I have it on Blu-ray. I think when they I went ever... when they went back to uh, him being the humanoid assassin guy, I kind of lost interest. I was like, bring back that the mafia like the drama stuff. Sh- that was the most interesting shit to me. The I mafia drama like, stuff. Yeah, yeah, especially the point where. Um, where, Har- where Harry, his friend, like finally betrays him. It was like the most dramatic thing I had seen. Yeah, that was the best part. And then when they go yeah. forward in time again and he's like a zombie, I'm like, I don't, I don't know about this anymore. Yeah, but then the final episode where like they finally fight each other, that was like heart-wrenching to watch. So highly recommend it. It's on Hulu and it's subbed on Hulu if that matters to you. So that that's that's how Trigon ends. <laughs> Yeah. It's the same ending. <laughs> um but it's better. <laughs> maybe I'll rewatch that. Uh yeah. anyway. Uh so yeah, if you need a good anime to watch, that's a good anime to watch. Yeah. That guy also made an anime called uh Blood Blockade Battlefront, and it looks again the same. Uh season yeah. one I didn't like too much. Season two was great. But you have to get through season one to watch season two, or else it won't be good. Yeah. Maybe I'll watch that. No, I'll I'm going to finish Cowboy Bebop, then I'm going to watch Gungrave, then I'm going to watch Blood Bucket Battle Fort. I kind of want to watch Squid Game now. I saw my roommate watching it a little bit, Everybody and I was keeps like, this talking looks kind of good. About it, and I saw the trailer, and it looks really good. It does just but look I've like seen, a live action anime. But I've seen Battle Royale like a hundred times. So. <laughs> All right, let's move forward quickly. We got Bandai Namco has a new logo. Who cares? Yeah, like this was like on every website. So apparently it's important. People are upset about this new logo. The old logo wasn't good either. <laughs> but you, you know what I think it is? And I kind of see it. The old logo at least had personality to it. Right. This one really just is like straightforward and Namco. It just... That's it. it. There's just barely... It, there's not as... The, the color was better and more... You could associate it more with them. Yeah. This one is just pink. It's weird. Uh, yeah, maybe they should have made it orange. I don't know, but I think I, I don't have any problem with it. And they have a new slogan: "Fun for all into the future." That's oh, that nice sucks. Sentiment. Nope, that sucks. That's a dumb lo- <laughs> slogan. Well, Edible Jim okay. Sock says, "Ugly T-Mobile looking ass." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really care about the logo. It's okay. Yeah, I know. Um, it's the same. Like, oh well, no, the the typeface is different. Yeah. Slightly. Whatever. Anyway, yeah. uh any more to that story or no? That's it. No, nah, that's it. Yeah, that's that's what it's gonna look like when you buy uh the next Soul Caliber or whatever the fuck they make. 
Uh, anyway, uh, hey, we got uh, Rockstar launches an update and teases Grand Theft Auto Remastered Trilogy. So oh, we've talked about this a lot pre- um, briefly before. No, just once. I feel like I've talked about this a lot or heard about it a lot. We talk about like Grand Theft Auto coming to Switch all the time. I think we've mm-hmm. only really talked about like them possibly doing a remastered trilogy of the PS2 games, like a, like a few episodes ago. But now there's even more evidence that they're going to do that. Uh, Video Tech on Twitch looked back looked at the back end of the latest Rockstar Games launcher update, and sure enough, he found slots for GTA 3, San Andreas, and Vice City. Uh, this comes less than a week after Korea's Game Ratings and Admissions Administration Committee released a rating for Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition. Um, this is also part of a report from Kotaku in August of this year saying that the three games will be headed to PS5, Series X, uh, Switch, PS4, Xbox One, Stadia, and PC, and mobile devices. Uh, the games will be, uh, apparently feature a mix of new and old graphics. Rockstar has yet to officially comment. I So basically the launcher they have for, you know, Rockstar games, when you buy Rockstar games from their, them directly, has been updated to include code for the Grand Theft Auto trilogy. Yeah, it looks like part of the launcher, it says here, according to Videotech underscore on Twitter, it says uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City Unreal. Oh, I guess so assuming it's in the Unreal Engine, which is interesting. Yeah. Very bizarre. I did, do they, they don't use that. Take-Two doesn't use that, right? 2K, I'm sorry. Well, Rockstar specifically doesn't use that. Well, they have their own proprietary engine for uh, GTA 4 and uh, GTA 5. Yeah, because they test... So, but they, also, there are other games. They test systems in their other games, like Max Payne and right. shit. But that was starting with... So all of Rockstar's games are made with the Rage engine, and that for, engine debuted with the table tennis game. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then every every game since then has been like testing out features and stuff for the next Grand Theft Auto. Right, right, right. And then they they, so, then they release but, they release a game that is like heavy on shooting. Then they release a game that's like heavy on dialogue. And then they like put it all together yeah. and and they and they make a Grand Theft Auto out of it. But these games were from the previous generation, GTA Three, Vice City, and San Andreas, where they didn't necessarily do that. And I think they did license out their uh, previous engines. So. Maybe they did have to remake it in Unreal. Interesting. Maybe they needed to do that in order to upscale it uh, uh, yeah. successfully. Or to get it to run on the Switch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this is a launcher for a PC, so I don't know. Um, yeah. In- I think every th- all signs are pointing to us getting a trilogy of, of that. Yeah. Uh, I, think- I think I'm sick of hearing about Grand Theft Auto unless I get a trailer for Grand Theft Auto 6. I don't care. Um, if they if they improve like add gameplay improvements to the Grand Theft Auto trilogy, maybe I'll get it and play it on Switch. Because but one of the things I hated about those games was like the checkpoint systems were not forgiving. If you fail the mission, you have to start the whole fucking thing over again. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved Grand Theft Auto Five. That's the only one I ever Grand- beat. No, that's not yeah. true. I beat Grand Theft Auto Two, and then I beat Grand Theft Auto Five, and those are the only ones I ever beat. Grand Theft Auto Five is the only one I actually liked. I liked two. <laughs> we had it on PC, and I liked it a lot. Yeah, I used to play it all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, that's all the news. We got through everything. Yay! Wow, we did it. But we forgot one thing, of course. Oh no! Oh, no. It's tweet of the week time, everybody. Yay. This is what do we got here? We got uh oh yeah, dude. Of course, dude. We got we got this 102 year old man who was in he in in Japan and he was in a, a race and he was in like a little relay race. He's 102 and he and he completed the race. He didn't. Of course, he didn't. Get win or anything but he completed it and it's an incredible story and then the tweet yeah. is the quote tweet that says bro got absolutely dusted dude <laughs> left in the dust he got yeah. nowhere close to winning that race what's he even doing over there anyway that's it that's the tweet 
probably kick my ass in a race if that's absolutely I, i'm not doing any races you think i'm getting out of bed yeah. nope it's probably before i even woke up that guy reminds me of number zero zero one i get that reference because i saw that part of squid game when my roommate was watching it um uh. anyway we got notifications here uh yes. we got matt k with uh two months thank you we got Saturo jc with one bit no it's not i don't know what you're talking about dude it was that probably that was 37 minutes ago willow it's davis with eight bits i only have eight bits 40 dollars pokemon unite skin what are you fucking talking about willow mk <laughs> loomis with 14 months thank you so much thank you um anyway that's it. Let's talk to the chat yeah. now. Well, first we got to do last week's. Oh, of course. Podcast. Of yes. course. Guys. But everyone start leaving your questions in the comments because we will get to them when we were done with last week's show. So, yeah, if you're on the YouTube, you can just leave a comment below and maybe we'll pick your comment to read on the next week's yeah. Wolfden Live. So last week, I forgot what we talked about, but we have uh, Joel Aaron Stowe who says, I find it ironic that Bob doesn't like to read in games, but in the podcast, they do read articles. I'm forced to. Yeah. You know I what don't it know is? if you noticed, but we read these articles very poorly. Yes. So. I, I, it's not that I don't like reading. When I'm, pl I only really play games when I'm streaming and I have to entertain you people. So it's hard to kind of juggle you guys reading the chat, being entertaining and reading the game. So, like, it's kind of boring to just read the game. I just want to get to the yeah. point. I just want to get it over with, you know? And I get really frustrated when the game's like, oh, you got to read all this dialogue that doesn't, that doesn't matter, that isn't important. 90% of the dialogue in games is not important. Yeah. And the best games... The best games lightly push you in the direction to figure it out yourself. So, uh, having to read to figure out how to play the game is is bullshit i want to just be able to be let off on my own and play the fucking game unless i'm playing by myself if i'm playing in my room on my own and i got like a few hours to play a game then i have no problem reading but i'm on twitch i want to just get to the point so i could be entertaining it's really hard to juggle whether or not a game is good when you're streaming it because like death loop i'm sure is a good game not a great game to stream um uh, anyway, Namis69 says, I want Ben Affleck's Daredevil and Spider-Man Far From Home. I want that too now. <laughs> I, I, I think, think after I think after the Batman stuff, he doesn't want to put on an outfit anymore. I think he's like, they're going to hate me no matter what I do. <laughs> well, I've recently, uh, they were doing an interview with Ben Affleck and he said that, because he's filming The Flash right now. Oh my and God. he said that this was the first time it's been fun to play <laughs> Batman. <laughs> In a very Shit. long time. So that means that for the next few days after that, my number one Twitter notification was restore the Snyderverse. Oh, and I'm like, that's not what that means. No, that that means he hated that. He hated that. And he finally he's finally is able to play Batman in a way that is like fun for him specifically in a movie that has nothing to do with the Snyderverse. Right. Anyway, uh, Alberto Marcano says, the last direct saved me a lot of money, but uh, not into this JRPG weeb stuff. I'll get KOTOR and Kirby, though. I got bad news for you, dude. I know that you're really excited about KOTOR and Kirby. I have really bad news. Kirby's weeb shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to break it to you. But Kirby's I mean, also weeb shit. If you think about it, it you replace the Star Wars universe with like samurai, like traditional samurais and uh, feudal Japan. Star Wars can quickly become weep shit. Star Wars Visions. I watched a few episodes yeah. of that. Phenomenal. Love it. Yeah. You should watch that. I love mixing my uh, Star Wars with weep shit. The one that's made by Studio Trigger makes no sense at all, but it is incredible. It's just, Isn't that it's just porn. It's just eye porn. Isn't that most anime? It just makes no sense, but it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's literally a fight in space and they're just breathing. Yeah. 
But that's that's one of my favorite things about Star Wars is they don't give a shit about space physics until yeah. episode eight, where all of a sudden space physics matter. Which is another reason why well, I don't yeah, like that movie. Because they actually put a person in space. Before they, then, it was just ships. They did it with... Uh, they were on an asteroid so, in, in a freaking... Okay. That was the Force. Leia was using the Force in that movie. Because she yeah, has well, Force sensitivity. So cool. and in, no, in the very wanted, beginning. In the very beginning of episode eight, they're, they're, there's... They're in space because of the bomb dropping that they like that yeah. had to drop a bomb and the person was in space and she like suffocated. No, she didn't suffocate. What happened? Her ship blew up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you even watch the movie, bro? No, I watched it once and I said, fuck this movie. I think I watched all of them once. Uh. Anyway. Uh, Clinton Sella says, if you're getting a Switch OLED uh, before October 8th, the person you're buying from obviously stole it from either their work or from a truck that delivers them to the store, and therefore you are buying somebody's pre-order, and they won't get their Switch, and there's at least like eight, nine YouTubers that already have one, and of those Switches only, these early, so do you really need one more to report on it early? I got news for you, bucko. I stole this one from a fucking <laughs> little kid. <laughs> And I'm getting another one on Friday. Fuck them kids. <laughs> no, here's what happened. All right. And uh, Wood talked about this on his last podcast. I talked about this when I got it. I did a stream where I got it and I, I talked about it. I didn't want to say it in my video. People think this is grand conspiracy about people getting these switches because nobody's talking about where they got it from. I can't say where I got it from because I'm going to get the guy in trouble. Yeah. But it's a guy who owns his own store. It's his store. He got a shipment very early. No pre-orders or nothing. So he just had a bunch. Kevin found them and then showed the rest of us uh, uh, or told some of us where to get it. Uh, some other people might have found a different store. Just some stores got a shipment early. Um, I don't think I stole a pre-order from anybody. It's a, it's a legitimate store that just got a shipment early and I just bought it from that store. There's no funny business going on. I didn't. The guy didn't steal it. It didn't fall off a truck. Yeah. But I can't say what store because they could get in trouble. Yeah. It's not uncommon for stores to break street date on certain things like that. And it happens more often than you think. This just happens to be a very high profile device that this particular store broke street date on. And it is possible to get in a lot of trouble. For breaking street date including never being able to sell nintendo games ever again so it's understandable why people are treating this you know cautiously or being very quiet about this there, there's a so. store here in new york that does that with games all the time i'm walking yeah. right in there tomorrow or thursday and getting metroid dread so that reminds me i gotta i gotta pre-order that yeah. i did have to pre-order it in order to get it yeah. early from them because they well i'm gonna like pre-order it on the switch and have it download so i can play it right. on the train to comic-con right as much as we don't like pre-ordering games um right. wood says mine just came early i don't know why i watched your wood and eric show and i saw you come clean about how you got your switch <laughs> um so yeah that's the story we just found a store that was selling it that got a shipment early and it happened to a lot of stores apparently on the west coast we think we don't that that's the we don't know exactly why they got the shipment early anyway um uh, uh, your thing about not pre-ordering games reminded me i found this on instagram it's uh atreus from god of war saying that game looks good. I'm going to pre-order it. And then Kratos going, quiet boy. Let the reviews come first and buy it after it releases. They're not going to run out of digital copies. <laughs> I mean, it's a good point. I, I actually... Yeah. Uh, uh, so the, the reason why we say not to pre-order games is because uh, issues like Cyberpunk. Everybody pre-orders it. Yeah. They, they're really big on pre-ordering. Because they want you to get hyped up about the game and they want your money before the game even comes out. And then Cyberpunk comes out and it's fucking garbage and everybody hates it. And now everybody's stuck with the game. Um, yeah. But uh, I did pre-order Nicktoons All-Stars Brawl because I did intend to play it even though it looks bad. 
And uh, it was $10 off on the eShop. So I had to pre-order it. There you go. I had to get my $10 off. And in terms of like pre-ordering digital games, that, I, for the game like Metroid at least, that's mostly just to preload it onto my Switch so that I have it ready to go. Um, but yeah, mo- unless it's like from a, well, I was going to say, unless it's from like a company you respect or in a series you respect, don't pre-order, but everybody respected CD Projekt Red and look what happens. <laughs> True. Yeah, so. Nintendo is always different. Yes, well. they're always the outlier. Uh, yeah. Melon from last week says, we only had two Genesis controllers growing up and they were both three buttons. Never even saw a non-off-brand six button till later, uh, uh, till like a decade later. Yeah, I don't understand why we had a million Sega Genesis controllers. We I don't know we what had happened. Four. We had four. We had a, a, an original three button, we had an original six button, and then we had the two arcade fight sticks which were six buttons i thought we had two three button two six buttons and two nope. arcade sticks no. we had one we had one three button we had one six button and we had two arcade sticks i did not know that yeah i don't know anything apparently that's why it's why i'm here that's it from last week that's all it's all the stuff from all last right. week give us something good chat Wood just told me that's not what he said. Tell me what you said on the podcast so I can clarify so so that people don't have a misunderstanding. Uh, so Bob and Will, what do Pokemon Unite charging the same price as a game for a $40 uh, nine tail skin is ridiculous? Okay, Willow brought this up before. I don't know yeah. anything about this. Pokemon Unite nine tails <laughs> jay can 64 i won a wireless six button controller from nickelodeon as a kid oh my god <laughs> that's actually pretty cool i didn't know they made that did you were you on like guts or something no what's that one someone uh, where you like have it what's the one where you have like a talent and then you have oh. and they have to guess what the talent is uh no it's not what would you do it was uh Figure it out. Figure it out. Yes. Were you on yeah. figure it out? Did you? You didn't get space camp, I guess. Yeah. So I guess they figured it out. <laughs> anyway, this is the um, nine tails outfit. Why is it forty dollars? Ugh. Why? <laughs> Why indeed? And did did Scootish get it? Is the question. Timmy Studios unveiled an all new skin for Alolan Ninetales that looks pretty cool. I thought to myself, I generally don't really care for cosmetics in games, but even my attention is occasionally grabbed by decent designs. Ninetales is also a great Pokemon, which obviously helps. Oh, hang on, I muttered. It costs over 2,000 Air Aerios gems. What? For those unacquainted with, okay. Okay, so it just actually legit costs $40. There's no like funny business. I mean, it is funny business, but there's no like yeah. layers. It's just legit. It's $40 for this freaking skin. I will say, Pokemon Unite, they've been crushing it with skins. The, the freaking Blastoise skin looks awesome. But uh, $40? Yeah, but like $40. For a free to play game, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, Bob, did you hear that GDP is making a new Android handheld called the GDP XP? I think that's the one that looks like an old, like, like freaking uh, 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 Apple II. <laughs> um, is that the one that's like a clamshell? Because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't interested in that. Aren't they all clamshells? This looks, this isn't it, but this looks kind of cool. No, they're not all clamshells. Oh. Well, actually, the GDPs are, I think. Yeah. This one looks cool. This one looks like a phone. Yeah. It's a phone. Oh, it's a phone. What is that? FPS controller module? Why is that an FPS controller? That's oh. bizarre. That's so weird. Oh, I guess because the thumbstick? I don't know. No, no. The Xbox controller no. one. That's what you want for that. Well, unless you uh, you aim with the touchscreen, and then those buttons are just like for your switch of weapons. 
Ew, they have Comic Sans on their website. Yeah, Get the say. fuck out of here, dude. Get out of my face. Uh, Captain Tempest, starting October 27th, the PS3 and PS Vita PSN stores will no longer use a credit card or PayPal, according to Wario64. What? I heard this. I think they're going to, if you're going to, if you want to oh. buy, right now, if you want to buy games on the PS3 or the Vita, you have to buy it through the system itself. You can't go to the Sony store or website and do it. Now, I think they're going to require you to use gift cards to buy the right. games. I understand. Not your credit card or your PayPal. Well, they wanted to close those stores entirely. Yeah. So now they're just now they're just slowly removing functionality so that people don't yeah. get upset. Uh, it, it makes a little sense. Yeah. It makes a little sense, but it still kind of sucks. I'm not trusting it. First of all, Sushi Solo says, is that fucking Comic Sans? And then he says, I'm not trusting a company using Comic Sans unless it's Toby Fox. I would sell my soul to that man. Um, what's the one that's like a clamshell that everybody was going nuts about? I thought it was a G GDP. Oh, GPD? Wait, GPD? Right. That's GPD. different from GDP. Yeah. Well, these these companies know exactly what they're doing. They're confusing on purpose. Uh, do you think the GP the GPD XP will rival the Ion Odin? I don't think any of them going to be any good. <laughs> I think they're all going to be uh, uh, a little shitty in their own right. Possibly the Steam Machine has a chance to be good. Yeah. The GDP win is 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 one of them, and I th yeah, yeah, that's different than GPD, right? I've heard of GPD. I've never heard of. Oh no, you're right. GDP. GPD win is the one that's a clamshell, but it's it's not the clamshell I'm thinking of. There's a newer clamshell now. Um, let me look at uh, what's his name, uh, Retro Game Core. He knows what's Doesn't, up. Doesn't uh, Izzy have like a hundred of these things? I think he's been out of the game a while, to be honest. Uh, um, but yeah, I I think the uh, I I think that the uh, uh, Steam the Valve thing, I think that yeah. one's gonna be the 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 new hotness, even though it's gonna be expensive compared to these. Yeah. it's not really expensive, but compared to these, it's expensive. The one I'm thinking of is the Pal Kitty X18S. Uh and it looks like that. And I said it looks like a freaking Apple II. Oh yeah, that is 100%. <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah. anyway. Oh, Mac Daddy Blasters. Thanks for gifting the sub, my guy. I appreciate Thank you. it. Uh GD Pin Win 3 is the latest. It's a Switch like. Is that different than the one I was just looking at? Which looked like a yeah. phone? The the GPD Win 3 is basically their um their st their Steam Machine competitor. Steam Deck. This is a this is a sidekick, guys. <laughs> this is a T Mobile sidekick. Do you think I can use Wazda on this bad boy? It says it's their first uh, candy bar handheld game console. Candy bar? Uh, cell phones that are shaped like this are often referred to as candy bar shaped. What? Yeah, that, that's a thing. I thought the candy bar thing was like the LG chocolate. No. Was that LG? Probably. Look at this. No, that's not it. It looked like a freaking thing of lipstick. Yeah. Am I thinking of a different phone? No, there's... That's it, the top corner one. Top left? Yeah, scroll, go all the way back up. Um, I, you're on a delay. Yeah, that one. No, wait, this one, I think. Oh, they're the same. They're like the same thing. What's the yeah, one that was like a, a little, one. like a thin little shit thing? I. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I don't remember what that name was. 
I, I knew somebody who had the the, the chocolate, mm-hmm. and it, that was a dumb looking phone. <laughs> they were all dumb. Every single one of them was stupid. The juke was it the juke? According to the Sun Six One Two Three, it was it LG. Yeah, baby, look at this dumb looking thing. <laughs> this piece of garbage. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Now we're talking. Now we're on it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, fo- you got you youngins got it With easy, your man. Smartphones. Yeah. I remember cutting class in college, sitting in the library for some reason, uh watching the Apple keynote when they finally announced 3G. And I was like, oh, yeah. my, oh boy, I can't wait to hold my phone sideways and text that way. It'll be so much better. And now I never do that. Yeah. Um, uh, but anyway. Phones used to be fun. Phones used to be weird and exciting. Now no. they're all just black slabs. There was a point in time when they were not fun. There was a point in time where it was goddamn ridiculous. You're right. but There was a point in time when I'd have to go to the, to the phone booth in middle school and call mom. You have a collect call from mom, pick me up. Would you like to accept? And she'd go, no. And then I would hang up and then I'd wait for her to pick me up. Yeah. Anyway, we're done. Yes. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go and check us out over there and watch us on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast, your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. I will try my best to be live tomorrow. I said I was going to be live yesterday, but I had a lot to do and I uh, didn't feel like it. So there you go. Uh, and I still have a lot to do. This week sucks. There's a lot going on. Yeah. I'm going to try my best to stream tomorrow and probably Thursday, but I don't know. Uh, this weekend, I will be at too many games in Philadelphia. If you're in the greater Philadelphia area, come. It's a good time. Hang out with me and Wood and uh, Spawn Wave and a bunch of other people. Um, and I will be at New York Comic Con if you will be attending that event. Uh, I will be there Saturday. If you see me, uh, just say hello. Don't That's touch it. him. Same thing with me. me. Say hi. Don't touch me. I'm not actually going to hang out with you. I'll just say hey, what's up and yeah. we'll talk for a few seconds and then I want to go buy some video games. Um, I do think I have some Wolf Den stickers left. So if you do happen to see me and you want a Wolf Den sticker, if you can recognize me through my mask... I'll give get, you one. Get some from Dad. Dad has like a, a bunch. I, I think I found my stack, so. I uh, will also have stickers. I might also go to Comic-Con on Thursday, but that's still up in the air. Um. So, anyway, for now, go watch AJ. He's playing Pokemon Unite. Go in his chat and say, buy the $40 Ninetales. <laughs> and I will see you on another live stream. Uh, goodbye. Bye.